Hi, I'm Ed Sproing. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Synopsys with Mansoor Amar Fati. He's going to talk today about timing, acceptance, and verification in RTL. Mansoor, what sort of problems are you starting to find as we start getting into much more complex chips with do your assumptions match your, what you're actually producing? Yes. See, the, the problem is that with complex design, with increasing the complexity and increasing the frequency and then very fast designs, the timing closure is a big problem for customers, eh, for our designers. And um, to be able to met the timing, there are techniques like multi-cycle pass or false pass that you can waive the, the timing violation and then closure and then uh, you are able to tape out. But the problem here is that when you are setting these multi-cycles or you have this assumption, you have to make sure that they are valid and they are working also accordingly. This gets much harder as we move down to seven nanometers and five nanometers as well, right? That is correct because and then uh, they also the, the, the same time the, the frequency increased. So that means you have less time and, uh, and then eventually that the two cycles or three cycles that you were thinking was is not enough. That also this is, the, the, uh, this is something that may or may not, if you set up uh, wrongly, that uh, you need to simulate and make sure that it is working, correct? So why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. Mansour, what are we looking at here? Okay. What are we looking here is, is there a huge uh, the combinatorical logic here, data pass. And that is the source flip-flop and the destination flip-flop. And that is one example which both they have the same clock. But we have the enable to the data that as we know that, that the data from the source destination to, from source to destination doesn't need to be done in one cycle. And the enable signal that controls that. So as you can see here, the data reaching this flip-flop, you can take with that. And the data is coming from here, you will take with that one. You have one, two, three, four cycles. So in that case, you have four cycles to synthesize it. And, and that is exactly what people are trying to do for multiple reasons. The one is that uh, this, the, you can optimize your synthesis. So you can optimize, reduce the gates, reduce the number of flip-flops and etc. But at the same time, in, if you have some timing violation, and uh, you, but uh, you can set this timing while set up at the synthesis time to make sure that you can uh, uh, waive these uh, failures and then you can meet the goal. What typically goes wrong here? Okay. See, the problem is that typically the RTL design, we are designing RTL, we are doing RTL simulation, and RTL doesn't have timing. So every signal, even if you have a huge data pass here, in the, in the RTL simulation is immediately data available. There is no timing. So when we are simulating, and if these enable signals are wrong, if we are generating this enable signal of our FSM is wrong, because there is no timing violation, because there is no timing information in the RTL simulation, you may or may not, you are not able to see that, that in reality, what you are assuming that you have a three cycles or four cycles, but in reality, you don't have it. The whole design that you chip that you make it is maybe only two cycles or one cycle, and that can go wrong. And by the time you get to RTL, it's already too late, right? Correct. As, and then, then RTL, you know that you're running 10,000 uh, regressions, you're doing a lot of validation, co coverage, low power. There are a lot of things that you are going to do. It takes weeks and months. And then after you go to synthesize and then place and route, and in, then you are setting some wrong assumptions, some wrong constraints, and you're synthesizing and you're thinking everything is perfect, but your architecture uh, problem that you design had and you didn't recognize it, then will, of course, very costly, you have to go back in RTL, you have to fix the issue, and then you have to validate to repeat the whole these 10,000 regressions. And that is the time that you're going to lose. And that is the time that you're going to delay for your tape out. And your data path is not as simple A to B. It's also oh. now affected by things are on, they're off, they're in different modes of almost on, almost off. Um, you've got uh, variations in use cases that are going to come into this. How do you take all that into account? Absolutely. I mean. And that is the, uh, it's you, you brought very, very nice in the um, topic. You know that uh, since a couple of years, we have this low power we brought up from gate level to RTL. So we didn't have, I mean, in the past, 
was always waiting for low power optimization. Everything was done on synthesis time. Exactly for that reason, we have the low power simulation, the turn off and turn on. All everything is RTL. And this is the reason that we need to do this validation during RTL, because during Altair simulation, you have the low power, exactly whatever you mentioned, that turning off some clock domain, shut down, and then etc. that you can simulate and make sure that the design is working. Does it get more complicated beyond, say, seven, five nanometers if you're going into an advanced package as well, so you go two and a half D or a three D package, or do the are all the tools still the same? Is, is the functionality still the same, or does something change there? I mean, um, the complexity that you are referring is mostly for the, 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 the design and synthesis and place and road. That is, I guess, the difficulty will only come because of the uh, increasing the uh, complexity and then decreasing the, the size of the inputs that the, 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 um, the delays and the, the frequency increase. And that is very uh, played a huge role here that we have to validate that earlier. So yes, you're right, because of design get more complex, because then the, this logic, this data was much bigger and much larger, and then the control signal is coming through multiple IPs that can come from some third party IPs that you don't know exactly the specification. And that can be more complex. And because of what you are referring that with the, uh, the uh, nanometers that we are going really smaller, then it will be much bigger and then problem is much bigger to identify and get the simulation correct. There's also phases to signals. What happens when they get out of phase? Yeah, I mean, that's a very good question. If these enabled signals are not designed correctly, for example, in that example you can see here. In that example, the, as you can see that if the, the clock is this, uh, this data is coming here, and then you will be this clock, and the destination clock, because the enable signal is there, you will go into take the signals. And then, because the timing is short than as two or three cycles that you were assuming, then the simulation uh, will fail, and then also in chip will not work because the data are links uh, is not valid, and the wrong data you're going to capture. There's a lot of other factors that go into a uh, chip IP, which you may not actually have visibility into because it was developed somewhere else or it was reused from something and you're trying to stretch it beyond what it was normally designed for. What impact does that have on all of this? You've got a lot of variables all the way through this, right? Correct. That is a very uh, good question. And uh, because as you said, if this, the data pass, this is a huge long, and then also the state machine. The state machine goes through multiple IPs, and especially IPs from third party IPs or from different business units that you are not really familiar with, and that you don't know exactly the specification, or you have the wrong assumption, then will cause a huge problem here. And then, and that is the reason why you need to do earlier in RTL time, because validation that part in gate level is very time consuming. And that is, in this example, it looks very simple. But this is, it could be very, very huge, as you said, multiple IPs. And uh, that can be, uh, cause a huge problem. That is correct. So given all of these complexities, what's the solution? Ah. The solution is, which we always call shift lift. Because gate level simulation is very time consuming. And it's very slow. And because of the complexity, as you brought up multiple IPs and etc., the debugging, if something goes wrong, the debugging is very, very uh, complex and time consuming. That is the reason that we have to make sure whatever you are simulating, we are able to, whatever you are doing synthesizing, this constraint that you are setting, we are simulating accordingly during RTL simulation. And then, as I mentioned, RTL simulation doesn't have delay. In RTL simulation, you don't know the delay from the source destination to, to the, from source to destination. But if we are able to the, uh, pass the STC, the constraint, the, the multi-cycle or the false pass, with this uh, RTL design, pass it to simulator. And simulator understand that from source flip flop to destination, you have three cycles. We can inject, for example, for two cycles X. And then after the third one, we can ask, uh, resume the right value. Now, if your design is not working correctly, you're going to sample the wrong value. So you're going to uh, sample X, and then X will propagate, and then your simulation will fail. At the same time, we also have the capability to make sure that the source is also sending every two or three cycles. We are the, value, we are the, I mean, the assertion that we are looking on that, and if this timing is not uh, uh, um, is violated, we are also reporting. So with that 
topic. And this is the simulation. You are able to run the whole entire regression, the one that you are, kept, you are doing sign off with this, and then you can make sure that every, the, the, the constraints that you are using for your synthesis, you are validating during RTL simulation. And if something is wrong, it's much, much easier to validate, it's much, much faster, and earlier phase that you can capture the problem in your design and fix it. What you've done is really broken down some of the silos that have existed in the flow. So things like synthesis were se typically separated from RTL in the past. What sort of problems do people typically run into with that? Okay, and that's a very good point. See, in the past, we have two groups, two designers, this is RTL validation team, who is uh, validating and then passing the design for synthesis and then design the, the team. These are, they are not communicating and then they are not using and find the constraint that they are using together. But with this technology, we are closing this gap. This is the communication that the constraint that you are using for your synthesis is also using during simulation that we are validating together and that we are building the bridge between the validation team and the design team to communicate to each other, use their, uh, the constraints and make sure that the constraints are correct. Mansour Amrafati, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.